bottom of the body in this week's seminar. It's a pleasure to have Martin Markevich uh, giving a talk today. Uh, Martin is a specialist on like various topics in uh, quantum information theory. I think that ranging from non-locality and also mathematical physics aspects of uh, uh, of quantum information. Uh, Martin did his PhD, I think, in in the University of Gdańsk with Mario Zhukovsky. Uh, he worked in different places in Warsaw for for a while, in Krakow, uh, in Singapore, collaborated with many people. Now he's back in ICTQT as a senior researcher. Uh, as I think this is the name of that very nice That's position. Uh, yes, and today uh, he'll be uh, uh, telling us about a topic which is, at least for me, very interesting, namely like a generalization of, of T designs to non-compact groups, especially T designs for uh, the prominent group SL to C. The, the screen is yours, Martin. Okay, so uh, thank you very much uh, for invitation uh, to give the seminar. I will uh, talk about um, uh, joint work done with uh, my friend Janusz Przewolski from University of Gdańsk uh, on uh, construction of two designs for the group uh, SL2C via its cartan uh, decomposition. So let us start from an outline. So um, as an introduction, uh, I will uh, give some uh, introductory uh, talk on uh, the problem of averaging over symmetry groups from abstract perspective. Then I will state the uh, main problem uh, we posed, so the construction of SL designs. Uh, I will give a sketch of uh, our construction and then uh, discuss some examples uh, and conclusions. So let me start uh, from the idea of uh, averaging uh, of the abstract perspective for averaging physical quantities um, over symmetry operations. So um, in the most uh, general perspective, we can think of such process of averaging as an integration of uh, some representation of our symmetry group, which is acting on an operator representing a physical quantity. And this in integration is done with, with respect to some measure. Uh, it can be higher measure, it can be some modified measure, it depends on applications. And a well-known example can be, for example, the un unitary averaging in the second formula, which um, uh, is done on a uh, density matrix representing some finite dim dimensional quantum state rho. And uh, such an action of a unitary group is irreducible on the space of density matrices and uh, this example is not uh, very interesting as it leads to a, a trivial, uh, trivial result. It's just a maximally mixed state. However, um, all the stuff uh, starts to be much more uh, intriguing uh, when we come to the multipartite context. So uh, we, uh, when we discuss the averaging uh, process for uh, multipartite quantum states. So let us focus on now uh, on uh, unitary averaging and uh, the uh, multipartite averaging uh, can be uh, can be divided into uh, two classes: the collective averaging and non-collective averaging. The, uh, in the collective case, we apply the same unitary matrix uh, uh, on each of the subsystems corresponding to this multipartite state, whereas in the second case, uh, in the non-collective averaging, we uh, apply a different matrix, uh, unitary matrix on each of the subsystems. So we perform the averaging separately on each of the subsystems. And there is a huge mathematical difference, uh, apart from, of course, the physical difference, um, that in the first case, so in the case of collective averaging, uh, this action of a un unitary group or in general, some other symmetry group is reducible uh, on this uh, physical quantity rho. Whereas in the second case, um, this non-collective action is in fact irreducible and it, it corresponds to an 
irreducible representations of the uh, products of uh, direct products of, of, of symmetry groups. And uh, from now on, we will focus um, solely uh, on. Sorry, my, uh, my bump in was mm -hmm. just a comment, uh, maybe for uh, I don't know students or uh, people less experienced with those quantities. So you use the the, the name multipartite here, and it's it's a totally a great name to, to uh, like to use. Just in some applications, even if you have like a single quantum systems, but you are interested in like quantities that are quadratic in uh, things that you consider or like higher order, then th this kind of averaging would pop out, right? So you like, you may not have uh, like multi-partite system like to, uh, for those quantities to be relevant, let's say. Uh. Uh, yes, actually I, uh, uh, I need a tensor product structure just for, uh, uh, and uh, it can be, Due to due to partition into separate, this partition can be can be for 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 different particles, but it can be also some other part, partition for sing, for for single system. Yeah. So what, what I mean, like if you, for example, average like quantities that are quadratic in in the state of mm -hmm. interest, like purity, for example, right? Or like that uh, that then then like sort of. Artificially, you have multipartite system, but you describe a, a single system, and the, those, uh, those. You mean like uh, one seven, taking several copies? Yes, exactly. Yes, example, exactly. The system. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, just. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, so uh, from now on, I will I will focus uh, uh, solely on the collective averaging so the same operation acts on each of them uh, of the subsystems and uh, there are two interesting aspects of such an operation uh, connected with the fact uh, that the first one is connected with the fact that this action uh, of the tensor power um, of the un unitary operation is as um, re reducible on the space of uh, density mat matrices and is the this is the existence of so-called decoherence free uh, subspaces, which is here presented in a very, very symbolic way. Basically, it means that this action uh, decomposes into direct sum of actions on uh, uh, invariant subspaces. Uh, and at each of the subspace, um, we have kind of virtual um, factorization into two factors, the one corresponding to the multiplicity of a representation, the second corresponding to the <clears throat> some given represent irreducible represent representation which is parameterized by this uh, lambda index and this averaging process um, acts uh, 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 only on one of these factors and uh, lead, 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 leading to a complete uh, depolariz depolarization whereas the second component is untouched and um, this allows us to encode uh, some quantum information in, 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 in such sub, sub, subspaces which are un, untouched by such process. But uh, this, this is not the aspect on which I would like to focus. Instead, in this talk, uh, I will focus on another aspect of uh, collective averaging, which is <clears throat> the existence of unitary uh, designs. So, in other words, a finite averaging set for unitary averaging. And so what is a unitary design? So a unitary design is a finite, this is very important word, a finite set of um, unitary operators, um, the action of which mimics exactly, or in some cases approximately, uh, the um, averaging uh, over entire groups, over the entire group. In this talk, I will focus only on uh, exact uh, exact designs. Uh, I know that, that there is a huge field of uh, approximate designs, but this is not covered uh, by our work. Mm. And uh, such objects, so this uh, unitary designs uh, find found uh, multiple applications in quantum information processing, in quantum state tomography, state discrimination, analysis of random quantum circuits, and and many other. And uh, now uh, I will state the main problem that we posed, 
So our main idea is to generalize this idea of unitary designs into averaging over non-compact groups, like for example, the special linear group. I will tell in a moment why we will focus on this group um, uh, specifically. So in abstract form, uh, we will demand um, um, the following uh, so that uh, some I will not specify the physical meaning um, at this stage is averaged over the action of uh, this non-compact non group, for, for example, the special linear group. And we demand that such an averaging process should be represented as a finite uh, averaging. And uh, <coughs> in the construction, uh, we, we, we will use this, this um, abstract form, whereas for applications, this form has to be a bit adjusted. I will tell about it in, in a moment. And um, well, um, there is an important constraint. So we would like to perform this averaging as uniform as possible. So because this is a non-compact group, <coughs> so uh, it is not possible to average fully uniformly because such process <coughs> will lead to, um, uh, in, to, to uh, infinite integrals. Uh, but uh, we wish to uh, perform, to, 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 to um, uh, conserve as much of uh, un uniformity uh, as possible. And um, uh, Marcel, now- can I bump in with a question? Mm -hmm. uh, so here in this equation, do you uh, consider representation of, of this group SLDC or you, uh, you take it literary, like you take action that you wrote on the space of uh, like matrices on like, so I think it's like matrices on CD to the, to the T now. Mm. Right. So uh, basically here, um, here uh, in, this, uh, in this equation, uh, we fix uh, some representation. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, okay. this is some finite dimensional representation. Okay, is it uh, not necessarily, I see, I see. Finite dimensional also important. Yes, finite di di dimensional. See, uh, this this will be specified a bit later when 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 I will formalize. Um, uh, thank you, Martin. May I also bump in with a similar question to Michal? Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you have it in particular in some physical motivation behind yes, this? No, I will. I, like, I will. Uh, I will. I, I'm just. I, I'm just going to give you the, the physical. Okay, sorry for that. Okay. Just in a moment. Okay. Mm. So, um, as I told you, the, on the previous slide, we have an abstract uh, definition of the of the process or of the design to be constructed. Um, but now uh, let's make it a bit more physical, and um, I'm, I, I will try to convince you uh, that um, such an operation can be interpreted as a um, as um, averaging of a uh, multipartite quantum states over SLOCC operations. So uh, first, uh, note that um, such a map um, is not a properly defined quantum operation because uh, it is not uh, trace non-increasing non um, if L is an arbitrary special linear matrix. Well, we can fix it, but by just taking normalized um, uh, special linear matrices and then uh, the map with normalized matrices uh, has an interpretation of an SLOCC operation. And uh, then we can re 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 redefine a bit uh, the um, left-hand side of, uh, of this uh, design equation uh, and introduce this normalized matrices. And then such an operation can be interpreted as a weighted uh, average over properly uh, normalized uh, states um, acted upon by the some filtering operation, or in, in general SLOCC operation, and this is um, a weighted average where these uh, probabilities correspond uh, to the success probability of uh, of the filtering uh, operation. Uh, uh, which is <clears throat> connected with a given SLOCC operation. So this is kind of a, one of the physical motivations because uh, in our work we um, mentioned some other uh, possible applications, but um, 
for just oh sorry uh, just uh, just for the construction uh, i will i will um, um, use this uh, the, the maximally abstract uh, formalization and i will uh, come back to this uh, application in conclusions so as to convince you that our construction allows for uh, adaptation of this of this uh, concrete uh, example okay at this stage, in order to convince you that um, such um, designs, um, just generalized designs exist, um, I need some uh, historical perspective. <coughs> and uh, let us um, come back to the um, uh, idea which uh, stays behind uh, unitary designs and other uh, types of, of, of uh, T designs uh, which are discussed in quantum information science. So the idea of finite averaging sets. And this is the idea which is uh, uh, some sort of generalization of a mean value theorem uh, introduced uh, by Seymour and Zaslavsky in 1984. And um, so um, there, idea is the following, that we take some finite, this is very important, some finite family of continuous integrable functions, which are defined on some path connected uh, topological space. <coughs> and this fun uh, functions uh, has uh, values in RP. And uh, let us assume that this uh, topological space is equipped with a finite and, uh, <coughs> and positive measure mu. And then we can define a a finite averaging set for this family of functions with, with, with respect to some real weights uh, as a set of points uh, of this uh, topological space, which fulfills this uh, generalization of the mean value theorem. So that the uh, normalized integral over each of these functions um, can be represented as a finite, uh, a finite uh, weighted, uh, um, average of the of these um, functions uh, evaluated on the fixed uh, fixed points of the of the uh, topological space of which they are defined. And what is very important here, note that there is no assumption of compactness of the space S. And Seymour and Zaslavsky uh, proved that uh, such an um, such an concept uh, of a finite averaging set exists always um, uh, for any choice of, of uh, measure mu, which just is finite and positive. So it is very general result. The problem is that uh, it is not constructive. Uh, so there's no hint for a concrete construction. Now uh, we will uh, formalize what we mean by, by, by SLT designs. Uh, but, but for this, uh, we need uh, some uh, short uh, break to rewrite uh, this uh, mapping, <coughs> this ma mapping which is used um, under our integrals. So it is a well-known trick uh, from matrix ma manipulation, so to say, that if we take a ve row wise ve vectorization of the matrix A, of the matrix A, then <coughs> we can represent this operation um, in a way which is um, when the argument, uh, vectorized argument, uh, is not in between these operators, but uh, is acted upon them on the right. And uh, this allows us to uh, write them up uh, without specifying uh, the argument, which is not, not important for the construction, whether we act on some space of density matrices or some operators of any physical meaning. So uh, we will use uh, this version which is uh, completely equivalent. Mm. And now, so the historical perspective in the new context is our redefinition of, um, of uh, T-designs or generalization of, of, of a T-designs uh, to averaging over um, arbitrary uh, matrix Lie groups. So the definition goes as follows. So let G be a matrix Lie group, which means that there exists a faithful representation of G on the space of uh, automorphisms of some finite dimensional ve vector space V. This is very important assumption that we discuss only finite dimensional representations. 
and then a finite set uh, L i uh, W i of pairs, where L i are, are, are uh, elements of this um, of the image of the representations, and the W i are weights, and such a uh, set is called a finite averaging set uh, of order t uh, on group G if uh, the design condition is fulfilled. So if they averaging over uh, uh, over the, the entire group can be represented as a finite averaging uh, over some subset of elements of the group. Okay, and um, we can apply pointwise uh, so to say element-wise, the theorem of Seymour and Zaslavsky on the existence of, of uh, finite averaging sets. Um, and um, just a, a simple uh, application of, of their theorem on existence of finite averaging sets um, assures us that uh, such generalized designs uh, always exist for arbitrary choice uh, of a measure um, for which the integral is, is well defined, of course. But uh, as I said, uh, the proof of uh, uh, the, the, their theorem is purely existential, so there's no hint for construction. Um, uh, so I, uh, yeah, just wanted to clarify. So, no, so basically, if I understand well, as long as this function family that you can see that that is sort of needed for the Seymour and Zaslavsky theorem is finite, you can always, uh, let's say, have this existence. Mm -hmm. uh, is that, uh, do I understand well? Uh, yes, exactly. So uh, th th that's why we, we would have problems in a direct generalization to infinite dimensional representations, for example. Right, right. Okay, and like, and your theorem does give some, let's say, the relation between the cardinality of this family of functions and the um, uh, cardinality of this finite set. When no, 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 no. Uh, as I remember, there is no hint on the cardinality. Okay, thanks. Okay, and so now uh, uh, I will, uh, in this part, I will uh, show a sketch of our construction, which will be really a sketch, but um, there are uh, several elements. So let, let me start from pointing out the main difficulty. Yeah, so. Uh, the main difficulty, of course, lies in the non-compact uh, uh, character of, uh, of the group, uh, as, uh, of the special linear group, or any other non-compact group under which we would like to perform the averaging, which means that the hard measure, so the measure which can be identified with the invariant volume element, this group is in infinite and uh, therefore the um, averaging uh, taken uh, taken just uh, straightforward, we would leave to infinite results. So we need to yeah. modify it by adding some sub suppressing factor uh, to the measure, which assures the convergence of, of uh, integration. Of well, course- Martin, uh, may I interrupt here? Because actually that's a very good point that you bring up that probably we should have asked in the previous slide, because in the previous slide, uh, that integral would also be non-converging, right? On the left hand side somehow. Uh, well so um, okay so 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 uh, here in this definition uh, it is okay maybe I should uh, I should have uh, stated it uh, explicitly uh, we assume uh, that the choice of a measure is such that the integral is finite okay so, so it so cannot you will... be just a hard measure it exactly has to be some hard measure with with, with uh, with the suppressing, uh, uh -huh. suppressing factor. And, and then you will like, I guess, uh, take that suppressing factor to vanish more and more in some way, like, uh, okay, well, we'll see it. We will, you, you, you will see it, it, it will be shift, okay. shifted to okay. just one, one, one part of the process, so, so, so to say. Um, okay, uh, so, um, of course, uh, in introduction of the suppressing factor spoils the uniformity of the averaging process. And our aim is to provide a construction which preserves as much of this uniformity as possible. And- uh, uh, Sorry, Marcin, mm -hmm. I, I, I can move 
back it's to the side that you said it's uniformity, it's but uniformity here with respect to what, right? Because like on, on the steep group, you uh, in some sense, higher measure, uh, as far as I understand, is the, oh, okay. Okay, this is, uh, I, I don't remember uh, if the hard measure is unique in this case. Uh, probably it is, right? For it, 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 it is up to a constant. Constant, factor. sure. So in a sense, uniformity in this context, like, well, means like invariance under natural translations on your space, namely the, the action of the group itself, right? So, but so yes. here by uniformity, I want to clarify you. You meant like sort of embedding this this group in some Euclidean space and uniformity in the sense of this like Euclidean space, uh, or because uh, you said that modification of the measure spoils uniformity. But for me, this measure in this context is the definition of uniformity in this context. Mm, no, 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 the, the modification that it's not a hard measure spoils the uniformity. I see. Yes, the, yeah. okay, the, so I maybe it. didn't get it. I see. Yeah, so it's yeah. not a hard measure anymore. We are suppressing. Okay, sorry, it. sorry. Then, uh, yes, yes the, the uniformity is, 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 is spoiled by, by adding the suppressing factor. This, this is this right. Is okay, sorry. Point. Then I totally missed that point. Uh, my, I take it back. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. Okay, thank you. Uh, Okay, uh, and um, our result is the following, that uh, uh, we could obtain this SL uh, T designs uh, as a product designs. So uh, they have the following form, that they are products of uh, matrices, which, uh, uh, which correspond to two categories. So the first, uh, this K mat matrices are themselves <coughs> uh, T designs on SU2, so on the um, maximal compact uh, subgroup of SL2C, whereas this A matrices uh, are finite averaging sets on the non-compact component of the SL2C uh, group. And such a product form of, of, of the design is based on the so-called KAK decomposition of uh, the group SL2C which allows us to represent arbitrary element of the group as a product of two SU2 mat matrices and um, intertwined with a real matrix A, real diagonal ma matrix A, which uh, represents the non-compact uh, part. And uh, the averaging uh, in our constructions <coughs> is performed uniformly over the compact components, so over this SU2 components, and all the non-uniformity with this suppressing factor is shifted to the non-compact uh, uh, component A. And uh, I will uh, give a, a sketch of um, all elements needed to, to uh, set up this construction. I will focus on three aspects. Uh, so um, the first is the Cartan decomposition of the Lie algebra and the KAK decomposition of the group. <coughs> And especially the aspect how the hair measure um, behaves with respect to KAK decomposition, and it, it behaves um, very well. Uh, the second is uh, uh, Gauss type quad quadratures. Uh, we need them uh, to find these uh, designs for the non-compact part, and then uh, just just justification that taking such product of these two components actually give us gives us a design on the uh, group SL2C. And um, I would like to stress that uh, some parts of the construction uh, work for arbitrary uh, matrix groups and some parts work uh, purely for uh, the group SL2C. Uh, I will, so let's have in mind that, 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 that we are, uh, now we are talking about the group SL2C and uh, finally, uh, at the conclusions uh, stage, I will I will tell you uh, how it can be generalized and and uh, which which part can be straightforwardly generalized. So uh, let us start from the <coughs> Cartan decomposition. So uh, I will uh, I will um, maybe uh, 
start from some very basic definitions of, of the objects uh, we are talking about. <coughs> so uh, first the Lie group and uh, Lie group is a group which is at the same time a differentiable manifold. So like for example, the SU2 group of unitary two by two matrices uh, can be identified as a manifold with a free sphere. And it is of course the differentiable manifold. Uh, second, the Lie algebra. So at the abstract level, it's just a vector space uh, and out with a multi uh, a bilinear form called a Lie bracket, which satisfies this uh, uh, alternating property. So it van vanishes on the same element and the famous uh, Jacobi identity which uh, always look mysteriously. And uh, the most known, for example, the uh, most known example of Lie bracket is just a comm commutator of operators or matrices. But uh, uh, this is an abstract uh, uh, way of thinking, but the Lie algebra in connection with any group is just a tangent space to the group manifold and the group identity. And intuitively, in the more physical terms, Lie algebra is the space of generators of the Lie group. So for example, if we take the angular momentum operators, they generate the groups uh, SU2 or, or uh, SO3. They, they are different as groups, but they uh, have the same Lie algebra, so the same set of generators. <clears throat> and now uh, let's focus on the uh, Lie algebra of the special linear group. So it can be ident identified with the set of traceless uh, complex two by two matrices. And uh, it can be decomposed into a direct sum of two spaces. The, uh, they correspond to anti-Hermitian and Hermitian ma matrices. Uh, this decomposition is called <coughs> the Cartan decomposition and it has some uh, much more deep, uh, deep uh, um, background, but uh, I will not talk about th uh, this background. What is important is that um, this, uh, uh, subspace L is a Lisa algebra and this cor it, it, it is a, cor a gen generator of the maximal compact uh, compact uh, subgroup. And um, this uh, Cartan decomposition of the level of Lie, Lie algebra can be lifted uh, to a decomposition of the group itself, giving rise to the so-called KAK uh, decomposition, which um, under which we can re represent each element of the group uh, as a product of two copies of SU2, so this maximal compact subgroups, and intertwined with this non-compact part, which can be identified as a real diagonal, diagonal matrices of the form as x, one over x, uh, for x equal greater than one. And um, from the uh, matrix uh, calculus, this KAK decomposition uh, can be identified with singular value decomposition. Uh, and I could just start from this, but um, in our work, uh, we uh, introduce uh, this decomposition from this uh, Lie algebra perspective because it is needed to justify the behavior of Haar measure on, uh, um, with respect to this decomposition. So that's why I'm mentioning it. And um, uh, sorry, Tomek, just uh, sorry, Tomek, sorry, Mike, just one more question about the previous slide. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'm I'm in a okay, I'm a, a bit I'm a bit puzzled because this uh, so this A in this KAK is not a group, it doesn't have it's not a group anymore, mm. in this case. right? Well, uh now it could be a group, sorry. I, it is always a group when you have this kind of a decomposition. I think it is, it is. Uh, but then, then I'm like, if it's a group, then I have a, okay, then I have a question because like, I would like, like how would you construct the, so I understand it's just a commutative group, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Like sort of uh, isomorphic, I guess, to, uh, I don't know if X is probably X is uh, compact, but like should it uh, uh, is complex? Okay, but like my no no. I, I, what would be the inverse then if uh, X is bounded to be greater or equal than one? Should it be like maybe different than zero or something? I just uh, yeah. In the in the case uh, in the case of uh, 
uh, SLNC, this Cartan decomposition is in fact S SVD decomposition, singular value mm -hmm. decomposition. Okay, so, so X is a singular value. And since we are talking about the uh, SL uh, group, then, you know, singular values are inverse of each other, inverses of each other. Yeah. So one singular value is X, the other one is X, uh, is, is inverse of X. So, yeah. you know, you can just uh, permute this singular value. So the one which is bigger than uh, one is on the top and the other is uh, on the bottom. So X is in okay. our case uh, for for S. Okay, you can take it in the process of generality to be like that. Okay, uh, thanks. Okay, uh, thank you for clarification, uh, Janusz. And uh, okay, and so uh, now uh, I will mention um, another problem with this decomposition, and so the, na namely the fact that it is not unique, uh, which means that one parameter of, of let's say the second copy of this SU2 is redundant. Uh, because we see that um, this uh, KAK decomposition leads us to a seven parameter uh, parameterization of, of, of the group. And whereas uh, SL2C is just a six uh, parameter group. Yes, it, it, it's uh, parameterized by six re real parameters. So uh, one of the parameters corresponding to this KAK decomposition is redundant. And uh, nevertheless, never, uh, despite this redundancy, <clears throat> we can show by uh, some careful analysis that uh, when we integrate over the group uh, as functions defined on the group SL2C, uh, uh, the uh, Haar measure associated with uh, yeah, the volume element uh, on the group SL2C uh, has a uh, product form uh, with respect to this KAK <coughs> decomposition. So <coughs> uh, this is a, a kind of a, a higher measure factor, which can be, uh, uh, which is, uh, uh, which uh, depends uh, just on the parameterization of this non-compact non part. This uh, form corresponds to uh, um, integration over the uh, SU2 group, and uh, here we have just Lebesgue measure on the, on, on this uh, half free line corresponding to the, to this non-compact uh, component, and here a form uh, re re representing the volume element of a second copy of of this SU2 uh, group. And uh, due to this product form uh, of uh, of the volume element uh, of the group SL2C with, with respect to KAK decomposition we can perform the averaging separately on each component. And this is very important property of, uh, of the uh, Haar measure on with uh, <coughs> respect to this decomposition. And uh, as the second piece of uh, uh, tools- Sorry, uh, sorry mm -hmm. much, I maybe got lost again. So uh, like, Maybe like is the final message the following like the if you take higher measures on k so, sort of separate like uh, kind of separately and uh, higher measure on a all in all you get higher measure on uh, uh, sl to c or it's like sorry maybe I uh, because I, I I I didn't get the main kind of message that you wanted to get across uh, yeah. Um, well, so, <clears throat> yes, so, so uh, basically this is um, a way to represent a, a, har, a har measure of on a group SL to C, but uh, uh, which is uh, parameterized in this KAK way. So uh, uh, this, uh, because uh, we would like to, uh, integrate over SL2C, but in this KAK uh, parameterization, so, mm -hmm. so, 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 so to say. And for this uh, reason, we need <clears throat> to know how the measure behaves wi with respect to this concrete uh, parameterization. And this is, and uh, it is factor factorized with this structure and uh, therefore we can, per we can uh, also the averaging factorizes 
uh, with, with, with respect to the components. So uh, that's the that's the main message. Thanks. All right. Okay. Thank you. And um, as a second uh, second uh, tool, uh, we uh, generalize Gauss type quadratures. Mm. Uh, we need them uh, to uh, find uh, the finite averaging sets for this non-compact part. <clears throat> but firstly, let me just define this. So, so uh, this is just a quadrature formula for a, uh, here a, a single valued function, a function of a single variable, sorry, just, just a function of, 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 of single variable, which is integrated with respect to um, uh, some uh, weight function uh, w. And, the, uh, and uh, the aim of the quadrature is, um, of course, to, uh, to express this integral as a finite, uh, finite weighted sum of this function evaluated at some fixed nodes uh, of the quadrature. And this interval can be infinite, uh, of course. And uh, there's a general theory of, of how to construct such, uh, such objects, such, such quadratures. Uh, which is based on the idea of orthogonal polynomials, the families of orthogonal polynomials, which are defined uh, recursively. We start from defining an uh, inner product of, of, of two functions with, with respect to this weight function w and so on. And, and uh, um, by such type of construction, uh, we arrive at uh, quadrature formulas, which are exact for uh, functions which are po polynomials of some uh, fixed degree, up to some fixed degree, uh, which would be, uh, uh, which would uh, sa satisfy us uh, for the context of uh, finite averaging sets uh, uh, for this non-compact non part of this SL2C group. So, uh, as I said, I, I, we, 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 we do not have time for uh, showing this entire construction, so I will just uh, show you how it works uh, uh, when we May, may I just ask one thing? Uh, so is this WX uh, normalized? Uh, like its integral on its own would be one and the, would the sum of the WKs be also one? Mm, I think not necessarily. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it need not be. Okay, so I will just show you how um, how this method works um, for a con 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 concrete choice uh, when it comes to averaging of this non-compact part. So let me so let us imagine now that uh, from our uh, entire uh, uh, entire uh, SL element, uh, which is in or which is al already in the KAK decomposition. Uh, we take just the non-compact part. So um, let us assume that the, uh, this SU2 parts are just uh, identity operators and we focus only on the non-compact uh, A matrices, which as I said, can be um, identified uh, with uh, just um, matrices of the singular values. Yeah, so uh, X and uh, one over X and they are taken to the proper tensor powers. And uh, this uh, function V uh, represents two components. So one is the Haar measure component. Yes, from the Haar measure of the SL2C group. And the second is this uh, weight function W, which is the suppressing factor, which assures uh, uh, convergence of the integral. And uh, now, the method of generalized Gauss quadratures applies when applied element-wise uh, to these matrices A actually works for arbitrary weight function uh, uh, W uh, of X, which um, for which uh, this um, integral is well defined. Uh, but uh, in general, it demands uh, construction of, uh, of some abstract uh, family of, 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 of special polynomials. And uh, uh, I will just show an, you an example for a simple choice of Laguerre type weight. So if we choose uh, 
He has this e to the minus x of so this uh, Lagarde type uh, term, and uh, also the monomial term, which assures that uh, all the elements are uh, polynomials. Uh, we obtain uh, an exact quadrature um, for uh, uh, if we take 2t plus 5 elements um, uh, of uh, of uh, of this uh, of this quad uh, quadrature where of course t corresponds to the t of the t design yes and uh, this uh, matrices uh, of this a design are uh, just um, specified by shifted uh, zeros of <coughs> Lagarde uh, polynomials. And in general, if we would uh, uh, choose some other uh, suppressing uh, function, it would uh, lead us to some other family of, of uh, special polynomials and, uh, and this, this uh, um, designs, this A designs will be specified by zeros of this of these polynomials, which of course, in general, must be calculated uh, numerically, but we can treat them as kind of semi-analytical semi objects, yes, zeros of these special polynomials. Okay, so. Uh, so very much. Mm -hmm. Can I bump in with yet another question? So, yes. in those constructions, uh, like, the, like uh, what is the relation between the number of points that you need and the degree of the design? Uh, mm -hmm. Is it always like linear uh, for no matter which dumping factor you choose? Uh, uh, like, hmm. like what, what is known about like the trade-off between the, the, the two things, like the number of, of well, elements and the degree? I think it should be always linear. Uh, hmm. <laughs> because... Hmm. Yes, because this this is the the relation for this Gau the, this Lagarde choice. But I have an intuition that it will be always linear. I don't so, know, Janusz, do you have? I some? agree. I agree. Because it's uh, uh, from the uh, it's it's related to the, the degree of the uh, uh, um, orthogonal poly polynomials of the family of orthogonal poly polynomials. So the the, the, the main point is that uh, this, these quadratures are exact, which means that, uh, uh, yes, the, the integral can be uh, changed into the, the finite summation for uh, orthogonal polynomials up to some degree. And this T is related to, to the, the degree of, of this, the highest degree we consider for this polynom polynomial, so it should be Linear, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, uh, so like intuitively, like the polynomial of degree t or two t is roughly speaking uh, specified by of uh, of order d points, values of order d points, and that's that's why perhaps like intuitively, I'm, mm -hmm. okay. All right, uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, so so um, having these two two components, so this KAK decomposition and this uh, quadratures over the non non compact part, now we can uh, um, take it together and uh, construct the the final uh, final SL design. So this is uh, basically our main theorem that uh, if we uh, take uh, uh, an SU two design, this is K. And uh, um, a design on this non-compact factor of SL on SL to C, which can be, which is constructed using this uh, Gauss-type quadra quadra quadratures, then uh, we can easily construct uh, an SL design on the entire group SL to C as a taking just product of this. Uh, and uh, the proof is quite uh, is quite simple. So. Uh, we just need to um, check the following uh, the, this, the, the following design condition that uh, this finite um, finite sum is equal to the integral. So we start uh, we start uh, from the left hand side. We substitute this um, product form of 
what is uh, what we prove would be the design and due to the some sort of distributivity yes, of, 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 of the matrix product with, with respect to tensor product, we can uh, uh, easily prove that uh, it all factorizes into factors which, which correspond to, uh, to, to, to uh, averaging over uh, this separate components corresponding to this KAK decomposition. And having such factorized form, we can now substitute the integrals because by assumption, these are already uh, designs on the components. And uh, having uh, and uh, having um, substituted the uh, the integrals, we can uh, then take everything into a single integral uh, and <clears throat> restore by this uh, k restore the uh, arbitrary the, the, the element of uh, arbitrary element of the G of of an SL group as an kk um, uh, element. Uh, where uh, this uh, corresponds to, to well-known factors. So the SU2 factors and this uh, non-compact non factors, which finally gives us uh, what we want. So the integral over the entire group SL. Okay, so, and um, uh, as an example, I can, uh, well, let's discuss uh, the situation, for example, for uh, T equal to two, three, and five. So, uh, why I take this example is because um, we know that um, the unitary designs, the U2 designs for uh, uh, these values of T, can be constructed by taking the unitary representations of <coughs> symmetric groups of platonic solids. So, the tetrahedral, octahedral, and icosahedral group. And um, they need not to be always uh, U2 mat matri uh, SU2 matrices, but we need SU2 designs. Uh, but this is not a problem because uh, we can uh, make an SU2 design from U2 design just by simply dividing each element of the U2 design by square root of the determinant uh, of, the, of the matrix, which maps as a U2 design into SU2 design. And uh, then <clears throat> we can uh, uh, calculate the uh, designs for this non-compact factor uh, using, for example, is Gauss-Lager uh, quadratures. And uh, uh, as we already discussed, they, they have 2t plus 5 elements, respectively, and are uh, composed of uh, diagonal mat matrices made of these zeros, these shifted zeros of uh, Lager polynomials. And of course, finally, these SL designs can be constructed by taking the products and for uh, of, of, of these two uh, and uh, for this uh, values of T of respectively two, three, and five, we obtain SL designs of these numbers of elements. And now uh, I will come back to, 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 to the original, the, the one of the original motivations that I, I have given to you, namely about the Averaging of quantum states over uh, over uh, this SL operations, and mm, so as I said, uh, uh, such a abstract form of the design cannot be straightforwardly applied to averaging of quantum states <clears throat> uh, because it's, it's trace increasing operation. We need to uh, we need to uh, normalize this. Uh, this uh, SL operators, but this is not a problem. This is not a problem because uh, uh, this uh, matrix norm of this of this element, when we uh, look at it at the, from the point of view of KAK decomposition, which is a singular value decomposition, is just a, uh, the highest uh, singular value. So, uh, so this norm is just the X from this uh, non-compact part A. Uh, of the matrix L when taken with respect to KAK decomposition. And therefore this uh, normalized uh, averaging uh, would differ from the, the general one only by division by this factor X squared, which uh, will just modify uh, the um, A design 
the the design for the for the non 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 compact part. So uh, this 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 would be just a, a small mod modification when we would need to calculate uh, this uh, quadratures. Uh, if we would like to apply the designs to this uh, design for uh, for averaging uh, quantum states over SLOCC operations, because our motivation was to just provide a general construction without direct uh, without direct resort to any physical meaning, any con concrete physical meaning. Yes, but uh, our motivation is that if we would like to apply it uh, for a concrete physical scenario, then maybe some mod modifications. Uh, uh, are are needed, but but uh, uh, we we just wanted to keep it as as uh, as abstract as possible. So uh, conclusions. So we introduced the generalization of the idea of designs to the realm of averaging over non-compact groups, and uh, such designs always exist, but the, the general construction is not known, and we provide a construction uh, of them for the group SL to C as product designs were uh, constructed from SU2 designs and designs of this non-compact factor cal calculated uh, by uh, Gauss type quad quad quadratures. And uh, basically when we, uh, if, if we would like to generalize this to the case of arbitrarily uh, matrix Lie group, and uh, then uh, this product form would survive uh, it does not depend on the choice of the group. However, um, uh, in general, we would need uh, multivariate uh, Gauss type quad quadratures. As for example, in, in the case of SL3C, uh, this uh, non compact part is, is, uh, has two real parameters. So then we would need to, uh, to, to, to resort to uh, multivariate Gauss type quadratures. So it's uh, a bit more uh, complicated, and our work uh, does not cover uh, cover this case. But in principle, such generalization should be should be possible. And for a further reading, uh, just uh, free 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 positions. The first is the uh, original paper of Seymour and Zaslavsky on averaging sets. And the second uh, is the work of uh, Dunkert. Uh, this is, it, it is his PhD thesis, thesis in which the um, concept of unitary design uh, appears for the first time. And finally, our work, uh, which is uh, available at archive. OK, so thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Madison, for thank your you. nice talk. Thanks. Uh, let me clap virtually. Yes. Uh, yeah, we have some time for questions and comments to the speaker. So please uh, go ahead. So I have a question which concerns this KAK decomposition. So mm -hmm. is this uh, uh, product separation of Haar measure uh, also true for any general case of this KAK decomposition? Because one can design some different KAK de decompositions even for the same group. There are four or five standard types of this kind of decompositions. So it will be always like this that this measure separates into the into a product form. Well, uh, so uh, we are not sure whether this is true, but our intuition is that it is. I'm, I'm right, Janusz, as I remember from from our dis discussions. Uh, we were we were looking for a general uh, proof whether 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 it's always it always factorizes. But as I remember. We don't. We do not have in hand argument for the for general group. Yes, it is just an intuition that it should factorize. Okay, so there is no like standard lit literature about this. Uh, take I know book of Knapp, which is a very long book about group theory. So there is. Well, so. I think that's surprisingly it, it's not so be, be, because even when we are uh, looking for a construction of the hard measure for SL to C, it was not so so straightforward to to to, to find it. Oh, and, okay. and, and 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 for for higher uh, uh, special li linear groups, it's uh, it's also not so not so easy. 
Thank you. Um, any more questions or comments? Okay, I, I, I have one. So actually, uh, what, what I invited uh, Imagine to give a talk, I was actually thinking more, okay, I, I didn't read carefully the, the abstract. I, I thought more that it would be on, on continuous variables, right? Because for SL, uh, uh, no, no, but it's a it's, it's, it's super cool result that what you guys have. But like, as you know, for SL, uh, SL, SL2C, uh, also can be interpreted as a, uh, okay, it's a group that underlines uh, like Gaussian optics, right? For when you have, I, I, I guess, just one bosonic mode, right? Uh, so, and it, as far as infinite uh, dimensional systems are concerned, there are some no-go no -go results for, for the existence of designs as far as I'm aware. So my question is maybe by, isn't it the case that maybe by repeating what you guys did, namely introducing this damping factor, one can maybe save somehow the design property also for those more abstract, I mean, not, ab I mean, not abstract, more sort of like different situations, uh, like when you, when you have a rep represent, well, when you have like metaplectic group or this particular representation of SL2C that is relevant for optics. Well, so so uh, we, we we were thinking about um, uh, the possibility of generalizing uh, all this stuff uh, uh, for um, for uh, in, in infinite dimensional representations um, uh, of of for, for for example this SL groups or or uh, or symplectic groups. Um, but uh, our intuition is that um, that. Uh, Mm, this sort of finite uh, averaging uh, could be impossible in general, but maybe, maybe uh, mm, mm, it is possible to construct uh, discrete averaging. So to represent this this um, aver this averages as a as a series. Mm, but uh, this is uh, so to say uh, a, a topic for uh, for the next. Uh, next project so so uh, i think we will we will work on it in in the future but we have just an intuition that that it could be done but uh, but rather uh, but it but we should not uh, expect that that uh, it would always lead to to lead, lead to a finite averaging rather maybe kind of dis discretization than than uh, than this than, than, than finite averaging uh, could, uh, could, 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 could be proven. And uh, yes, and, 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 and that's, 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 that's uh, great that, that, that you mentioned this uh, quantum optical uh, applications because this is also uh, my another idea to, to, tr to try to apply, uh, apply this um, machinery in the context of, of, of Gaussian operations and quantum optics. And uh, right. we right. can yes. Yeah. So 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 this this is also the idea for the for the forthcoming project. So now now we are working on the on the second uh, uh, second uh, paper on this subject, which is uh, uh, we, which would be about uh, direct ap application of this uh, designs uh, uh, for this SLOCC uh, averaging and also about the. Generalization of this idea of the coherence-free subs subspaces uh, for the case of this SL averaging, because uh, mm -hmm. we have a um, kind of simple argument that that they uh, behave in a very similar way for for uh, when averaging over SLOCC operations. So so the, this this the, this will be in a paper in preparation, and uh, all the other uh, things uh, you mentioned uh, are are for much farther, <laughs> so to say, sure. work. Sure. Uh, yes, I, uh, thanks for this explanation. I see Zoltan probably wants to ask, uh, ask something. Yes, I mean, your question triggered a lot of questions also from my side. Um, but let me ask actually a simple, much more simple question on this. Uh, so, I mean, of course, you were very focused on uh, exact designs here, Martin. Mm -hmm. So 
obviously, I mean, I don't see any issue with um, with uh, if you would have um, like a non-exact design that there would be any issue popping up here, right? So, uh, like, if an approximate design, I guess you could carry over this uh, analysis. That's my, let's say, first question. Or, or do you see any any problematic? Well, uh, I think so. I don't see any 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 problems with with, with this. But we were we were although, not thinking about this. But but I think mm -hmm. it should yes, it, it should fit to, to 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 the construction. Yeah, although there could be maybe some uh, pitfalls there, I don't know, because of this non-compactness and maybe something can blow up, I don't know. But um, the other thing what, uh, why I was interested in, why, why this easier question popped up was your yeah. question. So of course, uh, <clears throat> I mean, now like, um, I mean, it's not so easy to do this infinite dimensional representation thing because here, basically, you you are I, you were I, you are either working in the defining representation, okay, mm -hmm. or you fix or you fix already a yeah. a representation, and there you have a finite uh, dimensional space, like say, the compact one, where you have a design, and this is what will be very hard to carry over to the to the infinite dimensional uh, setting i would say this is my feeling sort of yes exactly be, 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 because in this infinite dimensional setting <clears throat> we, we would not have a finite family of functions to to to, to uh, integrate over yes and, and to exactly but but then we have questions coming in that if you do uh, a cutoff somehow. Actually, there was a very nice work. Oh, sorry. Uh, there was a very nice work on, let's say, um, uh, how to decompose uh, using the Soloway Kitaev some uh, uh, linear <coughs> optical uh, gates, let's say, with cutoff, of course, with some cutoff. And um, like maybe last year, I don't know when it was exactly. And, and this cutoff could be maybe implemented on, on those functions or somehow related, but maybe, maybe okay, it's a long shot to talk about this now, but, but actually this is a, I would say it's a very interesting question. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> oh, but, but it is interesting. Could you, could you, could you send me the, 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 the reference? Yes, I can send you, Michal also right. knows that paper, of course, <laughs> very well, this, okay. this one, we can send uh, it. Not that much, some oh, oh, okay, not that... it's much better than <laughs> okay. Yes. Actually, uh, due to some uh, reason I cannot reveal, I know this paper better than Michal. <laughs> no, uh, oh. no, 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 no. Uh, right, right. Okay, okay. Uh, right. So, so, are there more questions or comments? I have one, but it's kind of technical one, so I want to to keep it to the, to the end. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, right. So I have like this. Uh, okay, this is like a general, uh, general question, which is actually like motivated by our work with with Adam and and Michal Kolodetsky, Okay, in which we started like uh, there is some funny duality as far as uh, like when you have standard designs or standard approximate designs, because like you you, uh, you can relate uh, high degree designs to somehow the degree of uniformity to which elements of those designs fill in the whole space, okay? And it, it can be kind of abstractly, like abstractly you can, uh, how, how to phrase it, uh, you, uh, you can view it, okay, we are here mathematicians like for, for the next three minutes. So you can sort of, uh, you, you have fu functional analytical properties of, uh, uh, let's say of your, of your family of points, they, they, they average like how they act in functions and you have their metric properties. And for compact groups, it seems that this duality or this relation is kind of quite well understood. But what is interesting here uh, in, this, in your context would be is something analogous happening also for non-compact groups. 
like this SO2C, for example, mm. like namely uh, maybe your kind of design or maybe other kind of design, design based on some EREPs of, of this group uh, can play similar role as standard designs play for, let's say, unitary group or projective unitary group. Um, yeah. Um, do you have okay, any so, thoughts on this? <laughs> well, um, unfortunately not, but, but this is a very interesting aspect. But, but, I, but firstly, Firstly, I, I would have to, 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 to go through your, your, your paper on this subject. A, I know the paper actually, uh, uh, the one you mentioned, but, but uh, I, would, uh, I would need to, 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 to focus on it much more to, to have some intuition of how we can apply these ideas. It's not something for like five minutes discussion, unfortunately. Mm, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, all right. If there are no further questions, let us uh, yeah thank Martin and uh, Janusz again for uh, joining us. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you. Thank you.